Good morning, dear colleagues. Welcome to the second day of the 11th Annual Assembly of the Eastern Partnership Civil Society Forum. Allow me to open the high-level session of the second day. And uh, today we have a special guest for the high-level uh, session. So allow me to present the newly appointed Commissioner for Neighborhood and Enlargement, Mr. Oliver Varhi. Welcome. So, Jure uh, Geld, dear Commissioner, and the Seretetel Udveslom. This is difficult, <laughs> nice. but very nice. Congratulations on your appointment as a new commissioner um, of uh, the engineer uh, of uh, neighborhood and enlargement. So um, during these days, uh, we are talking about the perspectives and the future of the Eastern Partnership. And um, of course, uh, we, the six countries, would like um, to know more about the future, to know about our perspectives. Uh, we are six countries with different paces of implementing the European reforms. Some of us want integration. Some of us want to um, implement the core values of uh, the European Union, which are rule of law, democracy, good governance, and human rights. And we all stand for it. And we know that uh, your experience uh, is very valuable in this sense, because you were a part of the Hungarian team, which made Hungary a member of the European Union. And you know all the instruments how to uh, make uh, this happening in the Western Balkans especially for North Macedonia and Albania, so you know all the instruments and we're sure that the, those instruments need to be applied in the Eastern Partnership countries as well. So we here as a civil society forum stand for the same values and work 24 out of 24 to implement them in our countries. And we are sure that uh, civil society needs uh, to have more opportunities during the next years of Eastern Partnership to be able to influence the implementation and the pace of the implementation of the European reforms in the Eastern Partnership countries. And thank you very much uh, for starting your um, mandate with uh, the speech at the 11th uh, Annual Assembly of the Eastern Partnership Civil Society Forum. So, uh, we would like to hear your speech, uh, which will be followed by a short Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you very much for the very kind Hungarian words. Uh, must have been uh, quite a bit of training for you to, uh, <laughs> to be able to, to speak uh, the language. Um, I'm truly honored to uh, to open the 11th Assembly of the uh, Eastern Partnership Civil Society Forum uh, very shortly after my appointment as uh, Commissioner for Neighborhood and Enlargement. Uh, let me start by uh, reassuring you on the importance I attach to civil society engagement and the rule of law. I firmly believe that an empowered civil society is key for strengthening a democracy, public accountability, the advancement of human rights, and resilience. Working with the Eastern Partnership Civil Society Forum and the organizations you represent will be a key priority during my five-year mandate. Civic engagement is crucial in this respect, and it will continue to be reflected in the EU's political and financial commitments. Bilateral and multilateral arrangements and reflecting the Union's interest and values, as well as the partner, uh, partner's policy choices. Let me stress that the EU is committed to supporting all six partner countries' reforms, 
and their sovereign policy choices. Civil society has an important role to play in this process, now and also in the future. The current multi-annual financial framework has foreseen 300 million euros uh, for civil society support, which has provided capacity building to over 1,000 organizations, including at local level and for local initiatives, strengthened involvement of the civil society at all stages of policy making. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm taking office as we conclude the structured consultation launched earlier this year to take stock of the achievements and challenges and, and identify the priorities for cooperation with the Eastern Partnership countries. This morning, I firstly would like to provide you with some of the main findings of the consultation. Second, uh, and based on the consultation, I would like to shortly set out some first thoughts, ideas we look to build together the future of our Eastern Partnership Policy Framework. And thirdly, and most importantly in this forum, share our ideas on the crucial role of vibrant civil society in shaping and implementing the Eastern Partnership Agenda. On the outcome of the structured consultation of the Eastern Partnership Agenda, we have received over 200 contributions from a very broad cross-section of stakeholders from member states and partner countries, including various levels of government, civil society, think tanks, private sector, as well as international actors. First of all, let me thank you in particular for the work done within the Civil Society Forum, including focus group uh, discussions in each partner country and for the written contributions already received. Let me share three key outcomes with you. First is that we see a strong consensus that the current Eastern Partnership Policy Framework, the 20 deliverables for 2020, is a good basis on which to build and continue working. The partnership jointly owned and result-oriented reform agenda is widely appreciated by both member states and the Eastern Partnership countries and across the range of all the stakeholders. Second, there is a broad consensus that we are delivering on stronger economy, stronger connectivity, and stronger society. Thirdly, as regards stronger governments, many challenges still remain. In some countries, we see the space for civil society shrinking. A solid majority of stakeholders, including civil society, member states, and partner countries, explicitly mention the need to step up work on rule of law, the fight against corruption, and the role of independent media and civil society in order to achieve more and more lasting results. The goal to tackle these important outstanding challenges is central point of my mission. It is key for citizens who need and demand transparency and accountable governments in their day-to-day -day life. Moreover, further progress in the rule of law is intrinsically linked to create sustainable jobs, growth, and opportunities for all. A favorable business environment capable to attract investment requires transparency, predictability, independent, efficient, and accountable judiciary. On the next steps, the consultation provides clear directions for our future joint work. Based on the consultation and in close cooperation with High Representative Joseph Borrell, I intend to propose shortly a framework of ambitious but realistic objectives for the next mandate. In designing a future-proof policy framework that keeps the Eastern Partnership relevant and inclusive for the years to come, your input will be key. I hope we can endorse this new framework at the next Eastern Partnership Summit, likely to take place in June here in Brussels. Finally, let me underline the importance of civic, civil engagement and the role of vibrant civil society in the Eastern Partnership today and tomorrow. They are key to monitor public actions and also to assist democratic and socioeconomic reforms. 
Going forward, I would work to ensure we move from financing and supporting actively the engage, uh, from financing to supporting to actively engaging with civil society. To that effect, the EU will sign framework partnership agreements with the key civil society organizations, which I trust will ensure an even closer and more fruitful cooperation, reaching a larger spectrum of actors and deliver better services to citizens. I would also like to engage more with the youth. As many of you know, the EU has benefited and empowered many young leaders during my mandate. I will work to upscale our targeted civil society fellowship program to enhance its outreach and potential. In conclusion, let me stress that we have a joint interest for the benefit of our people to ensure the INSTA partnership remains robust, inclusive, and relevant. It is important that it remains attractive for all partners and therefore, we need to continue finding the right balance between inclusivity and differentiation. What is even more important, though, is ownership. I am confident that today's event will provide further input on how we can work better together to deliver concrete benefits to citizens in the Eastern Partnership. Thank you very much for your attention, and I wish you fruitful discussions throughout the annual assembly. Thank you very much. Köszönöm szépen, dear Commissioner, for your honest uh, speech and uh, for the engagement in uh, continuing the implementation of the reforms so much waited by the citizens of the Eastern Partnership countries. Uh, when I uh, started the session, I uh, was saying that some of the countries are uh, implementing weaker the European reforms, some of the countries um, are behind. So there, there is a different pace of implementing the European reforms. So um, staying in the seat, I would like to reserve <laughs> the possibility to ask you the first question of uh, how it would be possible to, um, in the context of differentiation and inclusivity, uh, to help the countries with quicker uh, pace of implementing the European reforms to uh, achieve even uh, more instruments. Because, you know, there is a uh, discussion between the three countries of the uh, Eastern Partnership, which signed the association agreement, and the Ukraine is taking a lead in this process to f um, form... Uh, different kind of formats within the Eastern Partnership because we would like to keep this format and we, we, we are sure that it will bring very good results into the region uh, to be able to foster the implementation of the European reforms because you see the process. It is always um, uh, a different situation even in these countries. Sometimes backsliding, sometimes progressing. So. How could we assure that these countries receive even more support uh, from the European Union? That would be my first question. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Um, we have a very simple approach to this. Whoever wants to engage more with us, we are ready to engage more. Um, of course, in the Eastern Partnership uh, countries, we have very different uh, levels of cooperation. Uh, of existing cooperation. We have three Eastern Partnership countries uh, who have signed a DCFTA uh, with the European Union. That agreement uh, already foresees a very large scale uh, of possibilities to integrate uh, these countries um, in terms of values, in terms of uh, markets, in, in terms of trade, in terms of connectivity. So there's a huge opportunity still uh, to be tapped uh, from these um, agreements. Uh, we see that these agreements foresee taking over almost 70% of all the EU law, the body of the EU acquis. There is a significant uh, alignment uh, to our policies. But of course, if we have, if we have additional requests, 
uh, from these countries, we will be more than happy to, to go further. But the same applies to the other three countries. So it's not going to be dependent on us, it is always dependent on them. On the other hand, I still see major room uh, for implementation of the DCFTA. So we can, for instance, start by speeding up the implementation of the DCFTA. But we will be having tailor-made approaches country by country, uh, depending on the needs, depending on the aspirations, depending on, on the policy they would like to pursue. Thank you. So I would like to take some questions from the audience. Please. Via. So thank you so much for a nice speech. Uh, my name is Sophia Strive. And uh, first of all, I'm really happy to hear that you emphasize the need to strengthen the civil society and to listen to the voice uh, of the Eastern Partnership Civil Society Forum. Uh, and it's a very nice uh, summary of the main four conclusions from the structured consultation. So it's nice to see what like, the main takeaways from that was. Um, but now when it's 2019 and soon 2020, and the uh, 20 deliverables for 2020 is soon coming to an end, um, I think we all would like to know what would be your like, main focus areas for the future uh, to see in the upcoming deliverables, if that will be based on those for like takeaways from the consultation process, and in that case, what kind of actions will you take in order to emphasize that they are implemented well? Uh, and also, when you mentioned youth, for example, and, start, and strengthen the support to civil society, will that also be part of these new deliverables, maybe as like, uh, youth as an own pillar, or like what would be your main uh, focus areas? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, I might not be able to answer all of it, <laughs> because we do not have such a detailed plan uh, as yet. Um, as I said, we're just about to conclude uh, the consultation. But um, as I said in the speech, uh, what we see is the, re is the recurrence of the different priority areas um, which we will need to which we will need to strengthen needless to say rule of law fundamental freedoms uh, including the freedom of the press is uh, is a headline uh, that we will continue and and where we need to rely on the civil society organizations uh, present in the in the eastern partnership countries we see youth uh, as uh, as a new priority, which could be an own priority, uh, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, the youth is the most active part, maybe, in, in civil society. So uh, if we really want to revive civil society in, in these countries, we need to build on youth. This is one part uh, why we are thinking about this. But there's another one, uh, which is that um, one of my own priorities is, is to try to create an economy, a sound, reliable, robust economy uh, for these countries. Um, one of their main vulnerabilities is the lack of a solid, uh, reliable economy that works for the people and that creates growth and jobs locally for the people of these countries. And in that, youth is the key. Uh, youth, uh, without youth, uh, it's not possible to, to create that. We see that um, quite a significant part of, of, of the youth from these countries have left the country. We need to do everything to re-attract them, to help them to get back and to get a decent living, uh, be it economically, be it security-wise, uh, be it uh, uh, fundamental freedom-wise. So this is why youth is going to be um, a focal point. Thank you very much. Uh, Lasha, please. Hello, Mr. Commissioner. My name is Lasha Tolushi. I'm from Georgia. I'm sure you know that uh, people of Georgia, Ukraine, and Moldova have uh, 
European aspiration, membership aspiration. And uh, for a long time, we are knocking on door to give us membership perspective. Uh, I'd like to say it's uh, really very crucial to, to us, to our uh, societies, and to our uh, citizens. And uh, my question is, what do you think, what do you think about? And uh, one more issue, we yesterday signed memorandum of cooperation between civil society organizations of Georgia, Moldova, and Ukraine. I'd like to give you this text. I think it's very important to Question, yes. Yeah, uh, this, this was the question about the um, mm -hmm. European okay. perspective. Yes, uh, on the European perspective, um, as you know, according to the treaties, any European country can apply for membership. So it is for uh, Georgia to, to judge uh, whether it would like to apply for a, for a membership. Uh, currently, <clears throat> we have not been uh, discussing this uh, in the European Union, uh, but what I see um, as, as, a, as a first step towards that would be the implementation of the, of the DCFTA that you have. The closer you bring uh, your country uh, in terms of policies, the closer you're going to get to be able to apply for membership. So European perspective starts with an application uh, for membership. Uh, of course, uh, it would also mean that when applying, you would need to demonstrate that you are closely linked and that you are very closely, uh, uh, very closely uh, oriented um, uh, with the EU. Thank you, dear Commissioner. Um, next question, Mikael. Hello, my name is Mikael Ovensian. I'm from Armenia Eurasia Partnership Foundation. Uh, Commissioner, thank you very much for uh, your, your words about the necessity to involve civil society in all the process of implementation of the Eastern Partnership and in continuation, actually, of this conversation. Uh, since you also mentioned the necessity to build up on uh, uh, what we have from the 20 deliverables uh, of 2020, uh, I wanted to mention that, in fact, one of the probably weak parts of the 20 deliverables was the fact that the uh, engagement of the civil society was not clearly articulated as a deliverable. It was uh, formulated as a cross-cutting thing, but it was never a clearly formulated deliverable. So in this respect, also in continuation with my, of my colleague's uh, question, uh, do you think that it will be possible to make this formulation of engagement of civil society in the implementation of the Eastern Partnership uh, as a deliverable that, that will be afterwards reported. Thank you very much. This is certainly something I would take back. I, I take it as part of the, of the consultation. Uh, and we will, we will reflect on that. But as I said also in the, in the speech, um, civil society, uh, we need them to be on the ground also uh, for us to get second opinions. So of course, uh, it is very important uh, that we have strong civil society organizations throughout the Eastern Partnership. This is something we can, we can, we can consider and uh, we should be able to, to get back to you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, should we take one more question? One more. Like, last question. Zaur, please. Thank you very much. I'm Zaur Akbar, coming from Azerbaijan. First of all, I wish you best of luck and that during the next five years. Uh, I would like to draw your attention on specific issues that concerns us too much. In fact, recently, Mr. President Aliyev and, uh, stated officially in his speech held in Baku State University, we will never integrate towards Europe as there is no difference between men and women. 
What do you think about this statement as a commissioner? Thank you. <laughs> well. <laughs> well. <laughs> First of all, I don't know the statement, so I would, I would, I, I would, need, to, I would need to look into the statement. Um, second, uh, there are quite a number of statements made by, uh, by statement uh, who, uh, who, who could raise questions. But um, if you want, I can, I, I, I can look it up uh, for you. Of course, um, equality between men and women is not only a European value, it's a universal value. So um, I, I don't quite see the link between the two. Uh, you would have to respect that in the globe. Belarus wants one more question, but we will have more opportunities because, uh, as I said, uh, that was the last question. One, more one, one. yeah, we know, we know, <laughs> sure. Belarus, very short, please, very short, please. Uh, dear Commissioner, thank you for your position, and you said that you uh, that it's important to have six countries on the board, and the Belarusian civil society we. Uh, a, a bit worrying about the processes was going in, in, in towards uh, this integration processes between Russia and Belarus that are ongoing now. And the question to you, do you have a position regarding this initiative from the Russia to integrate Belarus more deeper? Because it might enlarge their position to other Eastern Partnership countries. How you see what should the EU do in this regard? Thank you. So far, so far the, the EU has no position uh, on this. Uh, we need to look into um, how is it approached. If, if this is a, on the basis of a mutual agreement between two states, um, it is very difficult to, uh, to question it uh, from the EU. If this is done in a different way, um, in a not so peaceful way, let me put it this way, or uh, force is used, not military force, but other force and influence is used, of course we need to look into it, and we will have an opinion on that. Uh, but first, um, I see many, many news and many news contradicting the, the other ones. Um, first, I would like to see clearly uh, what is really going on. As I said, if this is on the basis of a, of a mutual agreement, it would be very difficult to, to argue. Uh, the choice uh, of, of third countries to um, create uh, further integration or even joining uh, one another. But as I said, we, were looking, we will be looking at this uh, on the basis of very clear uh, international law standards. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Commissioner. Very difficult questions and there are, there are many more to be asked and answered. We hope for a very close cooperation. Uh, believe me, we are your friends in the uh, European agenda, which we want to be implemented in our countries, and we hope for a very, very strong cooperation in the next four years with you. So, good luck, good luck on your job, and President Sepan, listen to the show. Okay. So now we, we announce the next panel, and, uh, and I invite uh, Natalia, yes, to uh, announce the next panel.